I do not personally train using a bro split. I do not program any of my clients training using a one body part per day split. And I think there are many more productive ways to train to build muscle. However, you cannot argue against the fact that they are the number one most common used training split in bodybuilding. And although many people fail to get results using bro splits, an equal amount have massive success with them as well. The science-based community hates them as the setup defies every basic science-based training principle, frequency being the number one reason. In this argument, I agree, a higher frequency approach will generally be more favorable for most people. However, you also can't argue against the fact that simple programming with similar movement patterns in one session with little to no overlap later in the week makes recovery and programming much more straightforward. But I'm gonna show you today that if you wanted to, you can do both. And I'm gonna put together an exact training split with exercises that accomplishes this. So to start, yes, you can take an extremely simple training setup like a one body part per session bro split and make it check all the boxes of higher frequency training, body parts hit two to three times per week, and keeping protein synthesis elevated between each session. I'll demonstrate this by using the most common bro split based on the chest, back, legs, shoulders, and arm split. For chest, any compound lift that day will work the chest primarily with a large degree of front delt work and a smaller degree of secondary tricep work. So by definition, you're also training shoulders and triceps on chest day, although to a much smaller degree than when you're training them directly. But now, if we add or pick other movements that add a high degree of tricep work on chest day that also stimulates the chest primarily. We're now getting direct work for all three of these muscle groups without having to add excessive amounts of sets. For example, if we incorporate just two specific chest movements on chest day that hit the triceps and the front delts very hard, we're essentially training the chest, delts, and triceps directly, even though we're using a typical bro split and it's Monday or chest day. The two movements in this case would be the close grip bench and dips. And your chest day might look like this. Flat barbell bench press for two to four sets, close grip bench press for two to four sets, incline dumbbell or machine press for two to four sets, dumbbell or cable fly for two to four sets, parallel bar dips for two to four sets. That keeps you at roughly five movements max for that day and 10 to 20 total working sets, all guidelines that fall in line with a typical bro split. Yet, when we look at the big picture, we are training the chest, shoulders, and triceps directly on this day, even though it's only chest day. And yes, close grip bench press is a pec movement. There's just a much greater degree of tricep engagement in this lift. And dips, they're actually a vertical press, and it will hit the chest and triceps very hard. But you have to understand that the movement pattern is similar to an overhead press. So naturally, it will hit the front delts very hard. Now, if we move over to back day, due to the fact that all pulling movements work the biceps indirectly, we can naturally add just a few key movements that are much more bicep specific. A great one being the underhand grip chin up or pull down. Vertical pulling movements generally all primarily target the back with the biceps secondary. And if you want to get technical and address this based on science, the pull-ups and chin-ups hit the upper back to the same degree. However, when doing an underhand grip chin-up variation, the biceps specifically are activated at a much larger degree. Same thing when we move over from a standard lat pull-down to a standard pull-up. The wide grip pull-up will target the upper back to a similar degree as the pull-down, but the pull-up will target the biceps much more specifically. So naturally, if we're building a science-based bro split, we want to incorporate all these movements into the routine. A typical back day that also targets the biceps and vertical and horizontal movements might look something like this. Wide grip pull-ups for two to four sets, underhand grip chin-ups for two to four sets, underhand grip lat pull-down for two to four sets, optional, barbell or dumbbell row for two to four sets, machine or cable row for two to four sets, dumbbell or cable pullover for two to four sets, and a deadlift variation for two to four sets. Again, this puts you in that 10 to 20 sets range, and you're arguably working the back and biceps equally in the first two to three movements. The deadlift's hitting the entire posterior chain, as well as quads, making it a movement that trains the back and lower body very effectively. And depending on your goals, you can make the deadlift more hamstring specific by doing a stiff leg, more glute specific by doing an RDL, or more quad specific by using a trap bar. By doing so, you're accomplishing a solid back bicep and leg day in this one session. But again, you're still only programming in back movements for this day because it's back day. Next would be leg day. Since we've already deadlifted earlier in the week, this would technically be the second leg session of the week. So nothing creative needs to be done here. And the beauty of this is that you can get creative on this day and also sprinkle in some additional work to other body parts that need attention. They won't negatively affect performance in this session. I'm personally a fan of programming things like shrugs on leg day, rear delts, face pulls, 
etc. These are all movements that will have carryover to deadlifting and ultimately build a bigger back but also bigger legs as a result. So we're essentially just putting accessory movements here on leg day. Similar to calves, they don't need to be placed here. They just fit into the split very well. So a very simple leg day might look something like this. Squats for two to four sets, hack squats or machine squats for two to four sets, leg press for two to four sets, leg extension, two to four sets, and leg curls for two to four sets. You can finish off with some calf work, ab work, trap work, rear delts, or any legging muscle group that needs to be addressed here in this session. Then next, we have shoulders. We've already done plenty of direct front delt work with the incline presses, dips, and any other compound chest pressing movements that we've done on chest day. So this would be the second time we hit shoulders here. So we will limit the direct work to the front delts here and focus more on the side and rear delts, but we'll also want to accomplish some secondary work to the chest on this day, checking off the box of that twice per week frequency we're after. A shoulder day here could look something like this. High inclined shoulder press for two to four sets. This not only works the front delts, but the upper pecs. Side lateral raise for two to four sets. Additional work can be done for the side delts with a second lateral raise variation. This can be cables or machines for two to four sets. Reverse pec deck for the rear delts for two to four sets. And one weak point specific exercise of your choice for two to four sets. Again, all shoulder specific training on this day, but it also hits the pecs hard for a second time during the week, accomplishing that multiple weekly frequency we're after for chest, shoulders, and triceps here. And finally, if we're filling in a typical bro split, we will have an arm day. This is where everyone gets it wrong, assuming arm day can only work the biceps and triceps, when in reality, you can make arm day a full upper body session by just being very specific with your exercise selection, picking movements like close grip bench, dips, chin-ups, and pullovers, which I'll specify on in a minute. All these movements can make arm day a very upper body specific workout, although I'm not one to tell you to ditch direct arm work, as in my opinion, they are extremely important movements that should not be neglected for full development. And depending on how much more chest or back work you determine is needed, you can pick as many of these movements as you like, or simply make it more isolation based. But I'm going to give you an example that makes this a very balanced arm day that also hits the chest and back very well. We'll start with the barbell curl for two to four sets, tricep press down for two to four sets, dumbbell curl for two to four sets, skull crushers for two to four sets, chin ups for two to four sets, which will also hit the upper back, bench dips, diamond push ups, or any other compound tricep movement that will hit the pecs in addition to the triceps for two to four sets. And finally, the good old dumbbell or barbell pullover variation for two to four sets. This will nail the chest and back and the triceps all in one movement. Now I know what you're thinking, pullover is a back movement. It shouldn't be done on arm day, but you also might hear someone say it's a chest movement, but everyone forgets that it's also an extremely effective tricep movement. If we're talking about the specific dumbbell or barbell variation, as this movement completely stretches the triceps causing a massive pump. But now if we want to take it a step further and make it an even more tricep specific movement without neglecting the chest or back, the pullover and press variation is a game changer. This old school exercise where you do a pullover with a barbell on a closed grip and then press it up at the top hammers the chest, back, and triceps equally. And in a setup like this, it should be a staple movement. Now, if we pull back our lens and take a look at this training routine, it's easy to look at it and assume that we have a typical bro split. A chest day, a back day, a leg day, a shoulder day, and an arm day. A typical five day per week split. Yet when we look deeper, we can see the advanced programming strategies we use to hit muscle groups directly and indirectly two to three times per week without putting anything on the back burner. Something that most people would assume that can only be done with a setup like push pull legs, which unfortunately always comes with the cost of having to prioritize one body part and putting the other one at the end of a session. So the point of this video is to show you that with proper intelligent programming, you can make a split or system more effective. And if you box yourself into a corner with rules that you think you must follow to get the best results, you will ultimately see less progress by being confined by rules. Many people will say frequency is best. Others will say bro splits are best. I'm showing you that you can find a way to do both if you really wanted to. But if your goal is to build mass and you're looking to do so using proven old school bodybuilding training methods that have been time tested, tried and true since the beginning of bodybuilding, I highly recommend you check out my five day old school mass gain training program in the description below. And as always, if you guys want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.